On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks have an eight-game stretch coming up against Western Conference teams. What do we want to see from them, from Luka, from Kyrie? We'll talk about that and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks, NBA champions. He hit it by It's good, and the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen each and every day. And every post game, we are free and available on all podcast platforms, including YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and comment anything below. Let me know what's one thing you want to see from the Mavs in this next eight game stretch. We're looking at An interesting stretch against Western Conference teams. Wins. (laughs) Joining me, as always, my co-host, writer, contributor at Mavs.com. The captain, obvious oligarch. The one more thinking. What you got for me, Isaac Harris? You know something we haven't talked about too much? I don't even know if we've talked about it at all in the Last of Us? No. Great show. Not not yet. Not yet. It's going great. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. You do have a history of spoiling shows on this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> one, literally one more than you. I've spoiled one more show than you have. Nick spoiled one show like four years ago. <laughs> Ruined a guy's and day. And it made, we got it this made huge mine. message about it. Um, the the people in basketball media, and particularly ex players, who are having a hard time remembering some history. <laughs> In particular, um, one, the James Harden, Luka Doncic comparisons of, hey, you know, James got, you know, hammered. We got to we got to respect and, this guy. We got to respect like, James Harden. This dude had articles written about him, TV segments and everything about, is he the best offensive player in all time? Like, the dude was praised so much. It wasn't until he had some flame outs, you know, in, to, in the playoffs and stuff, like, do we just forget the the praise that James Harden used to get? And also, I'll lump this together because it has some Mavs ties. The recent stuff with Jokic about hey, Europeans are not getting you know the same amount of flack you know as some of the U.S. born players. I'm like, guys, Dirk got drilled. I mean, obliterated until he won his title, and you know, obviously his MVP stuff. You know that year didn't turn out to say the least but it's it's like what like Dirk was not taken serious by so many people and had to go through so much junk said about him until he won it then he got the respect for people so there's just some history stuff that's just kind of being forgotten that's just like I don't know what we're you know what we're talking about here but anyway it hasn't been on my mind you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> remember and uh Draymond Green remember Dirk you've li- you literally played against him my, yeah. my take is that these guys are so busy being basketball players they don't really know what the discourse was because like you and I lived it like we we weren't good enough basketball players to play like in college or the pros oh. or anything like that and so we were I mean I was deep in the discourse and, and hearing what people said you know how much Sports I argued Center. on ICQ a ton <laughs> And we, we were in it. And so I, they weren't in it. They weren't in it. They were too busy being cool basketball players. So uh, on today's show, the Mavs have an eight game stretch coming up that I find really interesting. And, w- and I've got some things that I want the Mavericks to do over this next eight game stretch. And Isaac does too. And we'll share some of those. This stretch for the Mavericks. Some would say this would define the season. I'm not playing. I'm watching. <laughs> Utah at home coming up at the Pelicans. Then a home and home against the Grizzlies at Memphis and then home for Memphis. Then the Spurs at the Spurs at the Lakers. No, Le- no LeBron's not going to be in that. Then at the Grizzlies again. And then home for the Warriors who are a terrible road team. So this is a stretch of, of games against teams that are kind of all over the place in the West. You have three games against the Grizzlies who are in utter turmoil right now, dealing with all the John Morant stuff. Who knows if he's going to play in these two upcoming games against them. I expect Ja to play in that third game probably, um, but we'll, we'll see what happens there. That third game is uh, March 20th. We're, we're, now we're talking like a couple weeks from now. And so I'm looking at this stretch. The Mavericks right now are seventh in the West. They're a half game behind the Timberwolves. They're one game behind 
the Warriors for fifth. They're three games now behind the Suns for fourth. Um, something that I'm looking for in this first stretch, in this in this stretch. Now, let me let me start out with the spicy one. Let me start. Let me start out with my first spicy. Oh, one. getting spicy. Win all three Grizzlies games. This is something I, w- I want to see the Dallas Mavericks do because this Grizzlies team is, is all over the place right now and they need to take advantage of these games. Not that I think that they need to catch the Grizzlies necessarily. I don't think that they can at this point. They're five, no, the six games back from the Grizzlies. So three games, if they win three games, that that's that could help them right there, try and catch them. But it's, it's to catch the teams ahead of them. It's to catch the Warriors, to catch the Suns, even the Timberwolves right now. And I think that all three of those Grizzlies games are, are winnable for them because... John Morant is probably going to miss those two upcoming games that are, are coming up really quick here. March 11th and March 13th. That's this Saturday and this upcoming Monday. So we're talking like a week. We think in a week this John Morant thing has figured out and he's back on the court. Maybe. I mean, wasn't he just missing two games? There, He's away from the team, but now he's he's away from the team indefinitely until they, they figure out. So hmm. he he has is going to miss two games for sure, but we're not sure after that. And now the Colorado police are investigating what's going on with him. So whether he comes back or not, I still think these are winnable games from Mass. Brandon Clark is now out for the season with an injury. Dylan Brooks got his 16th technical, and he was suspended. He could be again. Uh, and Isaac Harris, do you know how bad the Grizzlies have been since January 20th? Tell me more. They're seven and twelve, just their overall record. They have the their offense and defense are basically tied. It's 111 points per hundred possessions on offense, 111 points per hundred possessions on defense. They're, they're basically even, and they've been awful in the clutch since January 20th. They've played 10 games that are that come down to like the final five minutes, and it's a really close game. They're two and eight in those games with an 84.5 offensive rating which is just garbage like absolutely terrible and then a 138.6 defensive rating which is like uh, put all the Mavs worst defensive players out on the floor and that's what the Mavs defensive rating would be, would be at the same time uh that's it's terrible it, it, they've just been really bad and they've struggled in the clutch all season this year with their uh, offense and defense so that's my first one Isaac Harris Am I crazy to say they should win all three of these Grizzlies games? Well, they'll be, you know, the Mavs will be loaded. They'll have a shot at, you know, at beating, you know, Memphis. And hopefully, you know, looking at, I mean, they play them, you know, kind of not back to back. There's, you know, a game in between them. It's weird because they play them in Memphis on the 11th. Then there's a day off on the Sunday. Then they play them at Dallas as Memphis comes to town. Then they play them home and homes. Yeah, and then there's a couple games uh, in between that Spurs, Lakers, and then you know Memphis again that that next Monday. It's not crazy. I mean, another thing you know that you didn't mention is Stephen Adams being you know out for a while, and you know there were jokes being made about that. I'm like, dang, you know, does Stephen Adams mean that much to this team that they they can't win games and stuff without him? It just what a what a tough you know situation that. You know, they're in. I mean, even the Dylan Brooks, you know, tech thing, it's like him and Luca look at each other and it's like, hey, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> and uh so they can just have a Is Luca a tech... gonna punch somebody in the penis coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um uh but anyway, is it crazy that they beat them all three times? No, they should because of all the stuff that's going on in Memphis. Am I confident that they win all three? No, I'm not confident. But this is a this is why I say this. I want to see them win all those games because they need It's hard to beat a team three times. It is. It is, but you, in that short a span. Especially a team like the Grizzlies who are are a good defensive team for the most part, uh to beat that team three times I think would be an awesome feat. I think they can do it. And the Grizzlies fans probably had the worst day on Friday. Like maybe the worst day of any team this season with the John Morant video. Uh, you had uh, Brandon Clark out for the season, the Dylan Brooks suspension. Like all three of those things happened on the same day. That, that, that may be the worst day for any. I was trying to think of some Nets stuff. Early, yeah. Nets when both but... those guys got traded, which, but they're not on the same day. The KD trade, I guess was maybe worse, but. Some Kyrie stuff earlier in the season for Brooklyn was probably yeah, that, tough. Yeah, that but, was not good. Um, Ime stuff for Boston, maybe, but probably not good either. Uh, 
So that's the first thing I want to see. I want to see them win all these three Grizzlies games. It's not maybe not necessarily an expectation, but a charge that I'm, I'm I want them to go win all these these games because I think they're capable of it and I think they should. So coming up, let's talk about some other things we want to see, some practical things we want to see this team do. Because I got some things for Luca, some things for Kyrie, and uh, for the rest of this team coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about Built Bar. It's a protein bar. Tastes like a candy bar. I had one at the game the other day, Isaac. It was delicious. Mm, I had what the, flavor? I had the brownie batter puff. It's my favorite one. I got to order a new box right now. Um, 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, six grams of sugar in a bar that's covered in 100% chocolate. They taste good. I love them. I think that they're the best protein bar. It's definitely the best protein bar I've ever had. But what makes them so good? They're covered in 100% chocolate, and they come in incredible flavors. There's churro, peanut butter brownie, cookie. Uh, cookie dough, coconut, almond, all kinds of great stuff. You can go check them out. Go get them at Sam's Club or Walmart. You can go pick them up right now. You got them at a DFW Sam's Club recently, so you I can go get them there. And you can also get them at Built.com. .com. All right, Isaac Harris. Thanks for being part of the show, making Lockdown Mavs your first listen every day and every post game. We appreciate each and every one of you. I found some more stickers, by the way. So if you're coming to the game, Ooh. if you're coming to the game, what tonight? I'll have I'll have a couple more stickers. Not many, so, but I, I did find some more, and I definitely have ordered some more. So let let me say some stuff about about this upcoming stretch real quick. Go for it. This this should be the the stretch that gets them back on track, though. Like if you're looking at a stretch right now that you say, all right. We've had a little rough, you know, rough stretch. We can talk about the record since, you know, Kyrie and Luca have been healthy, all that stuff. This is this should be a stretch of a couple of weeks here that they figure their stuff out. Because yep. like you said, they have, you know, you obviously have the Grizzlies three times and we know all the stuff that's going on with them. You have San Antonio. You beat the crap out of them, those guys last time. You should beat them again. Everyone they're does. they're trying to lose every single game. Um that Lakers game, you know, LeBron's not going to be there. No LeBron it feels like there's an injury update every day on AD. It feels like there's something like he's upgraded to you know probable or he's down. Not an injury out. update, an injury upgrade. <laughs> I feel like every yeah. day it's like something different that he's just. I just want to give a shout out to uh, AD at the beginning of the season, talking about playing all 82 games, and then I'm pretty sure Brandon Ingram maybe twisted an ankle uh, tonight. If you listen to this on a, on a uh, Monday night, but you know they got the Pelicans coming up on Wednesday right after that Jazz game. So you know if he doesn't play in that game, obviously they don't have Zion. So you know that's a that's another thing there. So you're looking at you know a Pelicans team that's missing a guy or two. You know pro- maybe even their two best players. You're looking at a Grizzlies team that's going through a bunch of stuff. The Spurs suck. The Lakers missing LeBron, <laughs> and and I mean I don't want to even. You could do the whole like Golden State, hey, their road no, record, no, all that stuff. I'll I'll do it. You don't want to do it. I'll do it. The Golden really State, the Golden State. I mean, do it, the but go- it's still the Warriors. The Golden State Warriors home and road splits is wild this year. It's it's the weirdest that I I've seen in a while. At home, they're twenty seven and seven. That's the same, almost the same home record as the Bucks. Like they're as good at home as the Milwaukee Bucks. On the road this year, they're seven and twenty four, which is basically, uh. The same as the Pistons, seven and twenty-six, or the Hornets, nine and twenty-six. The Hornets have two more road wins than the Warriors than the Warriors do. Like that's where they, that's how different they are. And so the so Warriors coming into uh, the Mavericks, you're playing a different team than if you would go to Golden State it and is, play I that know, and but... play that game. It's very weird this this season so far. So I wouldn't go so far as to put it as like it's in the Spurs category of they no. they have to win that game because that team is so bad. But it definitely becomes more winnable than like you know playing the the Suns the other night or the Sixers the other night. And, and they're wanting to win too. You know that's the biggest thing as you're looking at some of these teams here towards the end of the season. Like who's wanting to win and who's not. So then after that that Warriors game, it's you know the Hornets game. So if you're looking at three weeks stretch here, I mean they're you know the Hornets, Spurs, three against the Grizzlies with everything going on. Pelicans and Lakers both missing guys. Jazz, are they just trying to lose every game at this point? No. You know, so th- this should be a stretch of three weeks that they should they should have a really if they're serious about the season and they're serious about you know the duo being you know working and all the stuff, in three weeks, we should be looking at this saying, as long as there's you know, no injuries and all that, we should be looking at it like a pretty good record coming out of these nine games. Like, could we get you know, a seven and two out of this? Um, you know, heck, I'll take a six and three. But 
if you go 500 or below, I mean, that, yeah, that I, tells you. How, Isaac said, if this is a serious franchise, <laughs> if, they go, if they go, no, if they're serious about like wanting to do something know, come playoff time, if they, they got to figure this stuff out now. If they go under 500, then they're an unserious franchise, is what Isaac is saying. I mean, you could almost make the stretch over this stretch of games. They go under 500, you know, in these in these nine games. You know, there's some, yeah. So you but. would say it would define the season? No, would not say it defines the season. <laughs> who, would, who would ever say that? Here's here's one uh, tangible thing I want to see in this next stretch of games. Okay. Aggressive Kyrie Irving, just like the Philly and the Phoenix Ooh. games. First eight games for Kyrie in the first quarter. Five five points a game, and three and a half three point four field goal attempts per game in the first quarter. It's like, okay, it's giving you something in the, the first quarter. Last two games against Philly and against Phoenix, seven point five points per game and five and four point five field goal attempts per game. Like just that extra shot and the extra efficiency to go out there and score some more points. Like we just need a little bit more from Kyrie early on to set the tone, to be aggressive, to push the pace on offense. You need that. And honestly, like Luca. We've seen that we've seen the scenario over and over and over again. Luca gives all he's got in the first quarter and scores 18 points. And then by the fourth quarter, he's just like done. <laughs> he doesn't have enough. And he's he hasn't been good in fourth quarters this season, which is one of the reasons why he's not higher up in MVP talks right now. And so like they need a little bit more from Kyrie. This is the, this is one of the first steps in taking some off of Luca's plate. Now I know Luca's been great in first quarters. You don't want to take that all away from him, but just take a little bit off of his plate because he's got to save a little bit more for later in the game. Yeah, and I mean just the duo. I mean we mentioned it last week about you know this final stretch of the season here. That's your number one thing that you want. You know you want you want to focus on this Kyrie Luca pairing and trying to get it as ironed out as steamed if you do steamer over iron uh I got a steamer. it's pretty good the They're switch nice. from an iron to a steamer is it's nice it's pretty good pretty good move but that that's what you want to you know that's what you want to figure out you know by the end of the season in that so aggressive Kyrie Irving love that I have I want to see the 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 trio of Maxi Reggie and Josh Moore yes, yes. You know, that's your three best defensive players. They played 118 minutes together this season, 107 defensive rating for the trio. That, you know, that's going to be your your closing, you know, lineup, you know, those three guys with Kyrie and Luca. Um, I just want to see those three guys play together a little bit more. You know, outside of Luca and Kyrie for the rest of the se- regular season, you got to have Maxi healthy. So if Maxi has to set out a few more games, then you got to do it. But he just has to be healthy come playoff time because that just changes so much of what they do on defense. It wasn't a positive that he sat for that Phoenix game uh, with the hamstring soreness, but I was happy to see it because they're they're being cautious with him. Because one of the reasons why he, to- he tore that hamstring the first time is because he had some issues. Remember, he missed that game. He missed that one game, and then he came back for a game, and then he actually tore it, and then he and he actually had to go get surgery. And so I'm glad that they're slowing down on on him, that they're not pushing him to try and play. That that Phoenix game wasn't so important that we got to have everybody and push him out there when maybe he wasn't 100 percent healthy. They know how much they need him, right? <laughs> and they really do need him. I think they watching him in that one game uh, against Philly, you could see how easy it was to integrate him into the, into the team. He knows the defense on offense. He's just standing in the corner or setting a pick, pick and pop. Like he's done that with Luke a million times. So it's going to be easy to reintegrate him. He may not work off of Kyrie as well as we hope, but you know, that's not something you're going to ask him to do at at this point. So uh, that was one of mine too, was Maxi just get healthy, like get healthy, stay healthy the rest of the season because He's such a crucial part of this defense, and we need to see those three guys, Josh, Reggie, and Maxi. We need to see them a little bit more because that's that's the only key to being any kind of competent defense. They're not going to be a good defense. They may not even be an average defense. Just give me just give me a competent defense that is. You, you gotta you just gotta be a little bit better. Bobby, you know, Carl had a, a good little thread on it today on on Twitter of just can everybody just be like two percent better on defense? Like yeah. they just can't be the worst in the league. They can't be thirtieth. All right. Yeah. You, just, you know, you're not going to be top 10, but you can't be at, at the very bottom either. Can you improve? Just look, can everybody improve just a little bit? And it starts with those three guys as they're, you know, going to close games, play a lot of minutes, you know, come playoff time. Last 10 games, they are, they have 120 points per hundred possession defensive rating, which is 26th 
in the last 10 games. So they are not last. <laughs> not last. You here, know, here are the teams of... below them. The Rockets. <laughs> oh, crap. The Pacers. Blazers and Kings. So those are those are interesting ones. The, the, Dude, the Kings defense is so bad. The King, the Kings and the Mavs are like, they're they're in the same wavelength here. They're running the same stuff. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine if that's a first-round playoff series? It 150 might to 150. Be, <laughs> it'd be a lot of fun. Coming up, I have something from Luca. Eight oh. game, eight game stretch. He's got to talk today. He's got to do something. And I'll tell you what it is coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. It's the sports book of Locked On. You can go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. See what's available for you right now. Uh, we got Defensive Player of the Year. Let's do this one. We're talking about the Grizzlies a lot. Jaron Jackson Jr. I think he's going to win it. He's minus 160 yeah. to win the award. I, I would probably put money down on that. Brooke Lopez plus 260. So it's not too far behind. Bam at a bio plus 900 Giannis plus 2,600 Nick Claxton plus 3,600 that that ship has sailed FanDuel <laughs> Nick Claxton is not going to, he is no longer in the public eye anymore. I don't, I don't yeah. think you can check that out. You can check out all kinds of different stuff. They even have a uh, football that is not like American football. They have the football wow. that, that many of you listening would call football. Oh, um, give me a game. Chelsea, our beloved Chelsea versus Dort- Dude, we're lifelong fans. Dortmund. Chelsea is yeah. not favored. They're plus one twenty four in this game. This is this is UEFA Champions League. Yeah, it's a tough stretch right now for Chelsea. <laughs> so, like, go see what's available on FanDuel again. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac Harris. Let's continue to talk about this eight game stretch that Dallas Mavericks are playing all Western Conference teams. We think. Every single game is is definitely winnable. That wouldn't go so, so far as to say they should go eight and zero, but they, they no. are definitely all winnable games against teams that are dealing with stuff, injuries, just being bad uh, if you're the Spurs and all that, or being bad on the road if you're the Warriors. Here's something I need to see from Luka Doncic: zero technicals, zero. Give me zero. This, this stretch coming up, come he's, on. He's got 14 technicals this season. Two more, and he gets suspended. Like, prove prove to me. I don't he doesn't need to prove anything to me personally, but prove to me and probably your coach and your GM and your teammates and everybody around you that this is like that this sees like the you can rein this in. Get zero technicals for this next eight game stretch. I'm gonna go the opposite. I'm gonna tell you that's not gonna happen. He's gonna he's gonna pick up one in the Utah New Orleans like back to back, and then he's gonna pick up the other one on the 13th. And then he's going to be suspended for the Spurs game. <laughs> there you go. You called it. Just the that. So the uh, intentional rest where he loses the money from the game and and gets to rest anyway. That they're probably going to rest him some of one of these games coming up. They'll probably rest <laughs> him one of these eight games, and it'll probably be that Spurs game. But uh, yeah, I, I could see that happening. But I don't want it to. I, I want him to get rest for the sake of just rest and not <laughs> him and, not, and Dylan Brooks are destined for a tech. It's very true. It's a very good point, but he's got to, he's, this has got to be something that he has to prove that you can go through a stretch like this. And he has in the past end of season, he gets that 15th tech and then he just shuts up. (laughs) He doesn't get another tech anymore, or at least doesn't go so far. And he's gotten a rep. He's gotten a reputation now. Like he gets texts off of things that other players shouldn't have gotten texts for because he's got a reputation of, of complaining because he's earned, he's earned that reputation. Yeah. Refs are, you know, getting tired of it. Um, can I give another one? Yeah, I want to see this them figure your show out as much as it is mine. <laughs> um, I want to see them figure out Kyrie's minutes, mm. um, in like his spot in the rotation, as far as like not his spot in the rotation, but like his um minute distribution. Let's just say that, uh, because you know, we saw it the other night, you know, kid left him in a little bit longer. He even mentioned, you know, post game, yeah. his minutes went a little bit longer in the first. Um, Kyrie even talked about, you know, some stuff a few nights ago about the, you know, the fourth quarter minutes, some of that continue to tinker with it. That's what I want to see over these next eight games. Let's figure out. It doesn't have to be, I think sometimes they just get so married to the, Hey, Lucas had the same rotation forever. Then Kyrie just has to mirror that. And he has to play, you know, we got to do this, do that. You know, even the other night, like 
he's playing in the fourth. It's such a weird thing in the fourth because he starts off because Luca starts off on the bench. He plays so much of the fourth there. Then Luca comes in, they continue playing, and then they literally set him down for like a minute and a half from like the four thirty mark to like the three mark. Yeah, and then you got the you know under three timeout and all that. So it's like they try to get him a little bit of rest there. And because you know, don't want to play the whole fourth, all that. So just continue to tinker with it. We'll see what it looks like. And that's this eight game stretch is a way to do it. I would almost in this eight game stretch, I would almost sit Luca and Kyrie at the same time at a certain point just to get them more time in the fourth quarter together. Mm. Because one of the one of my other things, and I got two more things, but this is one of my last things is Clean up the clutch. Last 10 games, they're 2-5 and five in, in clutch games. They have 116.7 offensive rating, which is below what it, ha- what it has been when, you know, for the rest of the game. And then 130.9 defensive rate. Just, just terrible. Like, just brutal. They're getting outscored by 14 points per 100 possessions in the clutch. Like, just getting, just getting beat. And we've seen that Luka and Kyrie, when they play, all these games come around to clutch time. The Suns one did again, so now they've lost five games. The two of them and all five of them have come down to the final minute. So figure that out. Figure out Luca and Kyrie in the clutch. You're just gonna have to outscore guys. So that, that that's just gonna be the case. You have to figure out how your offense can be better uh, than how terrible the, the the defense has been. But they got to clean up the clutch. Yeah, and and figure out what the game plan is. We'll figure out what. I mean, when Maxi's back, you you know what your five is gonna be the close the game. But yeah. um, outside of that, it's like. You know, I feel like you you kind of know what you're going to get out of Christian Wood and Tim Hardaway at this point. They're kind of, you know, in, in a way, the same player, just different sizes. Of hey, they're gonna you're gonna come off the bench. You're gonna be microwave scores. Yep. Mercy, and it feels like yeah, it's like some nights Tim's gonna hit six threes. Another night, you know, Christian Wood's gonna have 24 off the bench. You know, and play 25 minutes and have a good offensive game. Like you you kind of know what you're getting out of that. I do want to get a little bit of clarity with, I feel like I, I know what I'm getting out of Reggie. I know what I'm getting out of Dwight. You know, I'm just saying, I know what I'm getting out of these guys. I'm not saying it's like, Hey, you know, you're getting, you know, you know, Wilt Chamberlain, but explain yourself. Sorry. I do. I do want a little bit more clarity and consistency out of Josh. And how, how are you? What? This is my last thing. You're right. Oh, go for it. No, you got here it. we go. You got hey, I'm, I'm tossing you the I'm tossing you the pitch. Wait, are we playing catch or are you are you pitching to me? Am I am I batting? Am I the catcher? All right. Here we go. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I caught it. Oh, you got to hit it. Oh, I'm, I'm batting. You didn't say. Okay, all right. you're batting. Are right, you ready? All right. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Josh Green's got to play more. Oh, he does. He, here's hold on. They just call that playoff because you didn't step into the batter's box. <laughs> in time. Uh, you, you didn't the, the pitch count, like the pitch clock, oh, no, you, you, it, you expired the pitch clock, um, more Josh green than Justin holiday and probably Tim Hardaway jr. Especially in the clutch when Luca and Kyrie are on the floor with Josh green, they have 130 offensive rating. They have 130 offense rating when Luca and Kyrie are on the floor, and Josh Green is off the floor. So it's the same whether Luca, whether Josh Green is on or off. Here's the defensive change between when Josh is playing with Luca and Kyrie or when Josh is not playing with Luca and Kyrie. Luca and Kyrie on the floor, Josh Green on the floor. Defensive rating 117.8. That's good for them. It's bad overall, but it's good. It's good for them. When Luca and Kyrie play, and Josh Green is not on the floor, he's off the floor. 124 defensive rating. So mm. that's a pretty big, that's a seven point difference right there. That is just with Josh Green on the floor and off the floor on defense. The offense stays the same. It's 130 both ways, but the defense changes. You can see it's a tangible change. You can see in that, in that defense and they just got to play him more. And he's got to be a, more of a, um, he's got more, it's got to be more intentional than, than, Holiday, he's got to be higher up the priority and probably higher up the priority list than Tim Hardaway. It was really interesting to see that Sixers game and to see Josh get so much, so many more minutes than him. Well, and he's got to work on his fouls. Like he he hacks people all the time. The foul and- thing is overblown to me. I, I I haven't like people have said that he he had that one game where he was in foul trouble with some weird fouls, and he, I love his. I just think he. It they, it kind of tricks the refs because he he tries so hard and he does get a little clumsy sometimes with it, but 
Here are his fouls the last couple of games. Three, okay. one, three, four. That Lakers game, he did get in foul trouble. Two, one, and then four and four against Minnesota and Sacramento. Like the, It's not like he's fa- getting five fouls every game. He, he's not playing with extra fouls on, on the table. So uh, that, that, to me, is not an excuse to not play him more. Still think he needs to work on it. I'm not saying excuse. He do, he does for sure, but it's it's not one of the reasons why you hold him back, though, right? No, 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 no. He just says. Would you rather have out. Josh Green foul somebody or Tim Hardaway Jr. get blown by again? Oh, Josh, foul out <laughs> before. Yeah, right. <laughs> Mark, I'm still thinking about yesterday. Fouls. I'm still thinking about yesterday when you said Tim played good defense for him. He played good defense <laughs> for him. Ugh. Yeah, I uh, I tweeted Isaac's face when I said that on tw- on Twitter for at Lockdown Maps, so you can go check that out. I laughed at some of those responses. Uh, good. Really good, st- really good responses from you guys. Say, say, give a take that would make Isaac Harris make this face, and some of them were really, really good. So go check that out at Lockdown Maps, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps. Go listen to Lockdown NBA Game to Game. You have every moment, every top performance. Lockdown NBA Game to Game. Local an- analysts like us that know our team's the best, responding and reacting to each game. Go check it out on the Lockdown NBA YouTube channel and the Lockdown NBA um, podcast feed. One more thing. Next time, don't wait till it's three seconds left to talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, shoot shoot, uh, shoot, David Locke a tweet and tell him, go Mavs. Utah's yes, in town. Yes. If you have Twitter, just tweet at David Locke and say, go Mavs. Yeah. That's it. Don't Nothing harass else. It. Don't be mean. Just go yeah. Mavs. Just go if Mavs. If you want to say something about the rebrand, how bad it looks, you can. But just <laughs> <laughs> say go Mavs. And uh, yeah. Anyway. Thanks for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.